perfectly. Okay, I'm going to skip through the first slides, but but I just obviously I'm a cardiologist as well as doing a lot of work with long COVID. I have significant concerns about the cardiovascular side effects that we're seeing, not just in long COVID patients, but in anyone that's had COVID. I'm not going to go into too much detail. These are some landmark studies. I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically there are loads of them now with millions of patients. All of them are showing that there is a significant risk of cardiovascular events following COVID infection. This is myocarditis in one of my own patients that I've reproduced with permission. There's also significant evidence that even if you are not getting um, cardiovascular complications after your first infection or long COVID after your first infection, there's a significant risk that you may get it after subsequent infections. And reinfection increases your risk of long COVID, cardiovascular complications, neurological complications, GI complications, endocrine complications, long COVID hospitalization and death. So two and a half years into the pandemic from a heart perspective, what do we know? We know that if you catch COVID, even if you're asymptomatic with index infection, even if your index acute illness is mild and you're non-hospitalized, you are at increased risk of acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy, cardiac arrest, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, myocarditis, pericarditis, pulmonary embolus, which is blood clots in the lungs that Claire's been talking about. And a lot of these are getting missed because we're seeing them in a different pattern. They're, they're microemboli and they're not being picked up with the standard tests. And we need to change the tests we're doing. Deep venous thrombosis, stroke and TIA. For one minute, I just want to talk about what what is the potential longer term outlook though going forward. Now, obviously I can't say anything for certain because it's not happened yet, but I can make an educated guess. And it's not just a guess, it's based on science. And this is my concern. My concern is, is that COVID, as we already know now, is causing endothelial damage. Endothelial damage is damage to the in, inner lining of our blood vessels. So it's inflammation of the inner lining of our blood vessels. Now, the virus is doing this through both direct infection and um, through the host response via cytokines. There are loads of publications now confirming that patients who have had SARS-CoV-2, and you don't necessarily need to just have had long COVID, this is just anyone who's been infected to some degree or another may have endothelial dysfunction. Why are we worried about this as cardiologists? Well, I'm worried about it for two reasons. I'm a cardiologist, but I also have a specialist interest in long COVID. Endothelial dysfunction, as you can see here, is one of the key players in the development of long COVID. Um, And we've talked about that previously, and I'll not go into it now. But also endothelial dysfunction is the precursor event for the development of atherosclerosis. And that is the disease process that causes cardiovascular disease, specifically heart attack, angina, stroke, vascular dementia, and peripheral vascular disease. So even if the mild infection, sorry, even if the acute infection is mild, even if people are not dying from it, even if they're vaccinated to some degree, SARS-CoV-2 still is not and never has been just a cold because this is about the longer term implications. And what we know from the science already is that there is clear evidence of cardiovascular and thrombotic complications in acute COVID. There is clear evidence of cardiovascular and thrombotic complications in the medium medium term in the 2.5 years we've had to study this. But going forward, I think there may be a significant risk of cardiovascular complications in the longer term. And and this most likely is going to be mediated through endothelial dysfunction and it needs urgent research. I hope to God I'm wrong. I would never want to be more wrong in my life, but what we are seeing so far is that COVID is causing endothelial dysfunction. And what we need to find out is, is it causing endothelial dysfunction in absolutely everyone who's getting infected? And if it is, is it healing by itself or not? Because worst case scenario, if everybody's getting endothelial dysfunction and if it's not healing, and if we've got 605 million people infected who've been infected with COVID around the globe and we do nothing about this, then my concern is that we're going to see a tsunami of cardiovascular disease over the next few decades. And by that, I mean heart attack, stroke, vascular dementia. So with that in mind, I am worried 
that we've lifted lots of all COVID restrictions in many countries without putting in any mitigations to stop reinfection because we know reinfection makes the matter worse. And really, I think there has to be some very sensible public health discussions at a country level, maybe at a global level, about what we do about this going forward, because COVID's not going anywhere, it's not going to go away, and we have to learn to live with it, as Maria quite clearly said, safely. And Thank you, minute, Ray. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, lots of things.